Yo, once again, it's on. Back at you one more again, Real Ken's TV in the house like kitchen sinks. Hopefully you like the video. Feel free to comment. Definitely share, subscribe to the Chiz channel if you're not already subscribed. And be sure to hit that post notification. So anytime I bring you this action and this heat, guess what? You're amongst the first to receive. Now with no further ado, let's get into uh, this afternoon's video, if you will. First video of 2024, just want to say Happy New Year to everybody. Um, you know, hopefully we can, uh, you know, we got started in 23 with the channel. Hopefully in 24, we can take this thing to a whole different level. You see what I'm saying? Go to new heights with it. But um, there is a message this afternoon. A lot of times people say, real kins, what's the harm? I always hear you speak against gambling in prison. What's the harm in gambling in prison? I mean, it seems like it's something, you know, for the inmates to do. It seems like it's something that's uh, harmless. I mean, after all, you don't have money in there. You just have Zoom Zooms and Wham Whams and honey buns and noodles and, you know, things like that. It just seems like it, it's something that would help you to pass your time along. So I don't understand what's the actual harm in gambling in prison. Well... That's an interesting. Uh, that's an interesting question, and I definitely respect um, that question because if you've never been to prison, you genuinely don't know. Two forms of gambling in prison: the major forms of gambling. You got your ticket man, and your ticket man um, is essentially a bookie. Now, what he does is he'll hire some people that you know not really receiving a lot of money or whatever and they'll write up a bunch of tickets called parlay tickets now when he writes the tickets up you may he'll put like all the games for the day on the ticket so let's just say it's 15 games that day it'll say you know new york versus dallas san francisco versus the rams you see what i'm saying and it'll have the time and it'll have the spread so basically You'll have a lot of these tickets and you'll pass them out to people who are interested in playing parlay tickets. So you may have 100 tickets drawn up. They pass them out. Once you pass your tickets out, if you decide, if a person decides that they want to play a ticket, they bring the, uh, let's just say they want to spend $5 on the ticket. Well, they bring their merchandise, $5 worth of whatever, you know, stamps, uh, some ticket men don't really take stamps too much, especially now, from what I hear. But, you know, back when I was incarcerated, stamps, um, but mainly food items. You see what I'm saying? Some hygiene, but you don't want to get overloaded with hygiene. So whatever that five dollars, you know, consists of, you take it to the to the ticket man. Along with the uh, the ticket. You mark your initials on the ticket. So the, the ticket man knows, okay, this person bet $5, that person bet $7, this person bet $3. You see what I'm saying? Now, you may not really mark your real initials because all of that's illegal. You're not supposed to gamble in prison, and you're definitely not supposed to be running tickets. And matter of fact, you may not even take it directly to the ticket man unless it's like somebody that you know personally or they're in your dorm. Typically, you're going to give it to one of his runners. The runner takes it back to the ticket man. And it's just something for you to do. They call it sweating. It's something for you to sweat. So it makes the games a little bit more interesting. So you want, let's just say NFL Sunday. You watching the games. Well, you done bought two or three tickets. Well, you have more incentive to watch the game other than just, you know, merely being a sports fan. So running tickets in prison, definitely a big business. It's definitely fun to participate in. And it's, it's something that, it's not as dangerous, but it's dangerous for the simple fact that if you get caught with any of this stuff and it's a guard, that's a, a jerk, which a lot of them are, not all of them, but a lot of them are, it's a major, major write-up. And not only is it a major write-up, they're going to take all of your items. So if you have all of this stuff in your, you know, all of these items, uh, groceries or what have you in your locker, in your, in your box, they're taking it all. Because they're going to say that you obtain these goods from gambling. Now, that's as far as being the ticket man. Also, if you're a ticket man, you got to run the risk of 
people trying to rob you, you know, just a whole lot of extracurricular activity. So you have to kind of be respected to be a ticket. Everybody just can't be a ticket man. You see what I'm saying? Because they're going to they're gonna run over top of you. In prison, they call it truck you. They're going to truck you. So, you know, being a ticket man is something that is very lucrative. Don't get me wrong. It's very lucrative. You can make a lot of money because just like on the streets, when you gamble on the streets, who typically wins? The house. In prison, there's no difference. Ticket man, he's the house. So, as I mentioned, that's not as dangerous for the players. But I have seen situations to where it's gotten ugly. I've seen situations to where a guy came in and he played, you know, several different tickets. Or one ticket several different times. And that ticket hit. Now the ticket man owes him, you know, 10 cartons of cigarettes. Well, they don't have cigarettes in prison now, but back then, 10 cartons of cigarettes. You can imagine what a, a carton of cigarette costs. One carton. Now the ticket man owes 10 cartons. If he, once again, if you're respected, or if he knows that you don't play no games, if he knows you're going to do something about it, he's going to pay you. Now you got some ticket dudes that it don't matter. They're going to pay whatever. You know, they straight up businessmen, but you got to understand this is prison. You see what I'm saying? This is prison. Dog eat dog world. So if you have a ticket, man, especially if he's gotten busted up that day, got hit pretty good, you didn't hit him and, and several other people, he just may not pay you. And if he doesn't pay you, now it's up to you to, okay, what am I going to, am I going to accept this, this loss? Everybody's looking. Am I just going to accept this loss or am I going to do something about it? So it puts you in a dangerous situation because now you don't really want to do anything to anyone, but at the same time, you can't be no chump, especially in prison. You can't be a chump because if, if one person sees you get ran over like that, everybody's going to run over you. And that's a fact. That's a fact. That's not just a... That's big facts. So now you have to go do something to the ticket man because he didn't want to pay you. And as I mentioned earlier, he got goons. He got, you know, guys that, that are uh, collectors. He has guys that he can, you know, hey, man, I give you $15, handle this, man. So you're going to have to, you know, get past all of that. So it's best to just, if you are going to play tickets in prison, don't try to break the house. You see what I'm saying? You know, if you want to play three, four, five dollars, and if you win, you pick up $15, $20 at a time, $10, something light, that's cool. But if you're trying to break the house and the time comes where you do break the house and he doesn't want to pay, well, you have a decision to make. Next, I'd say the biggest poker, poker, by far the biggest risk, the biggest uh, uh, danger, if you will, as far as gambling in prison is poker. Poker is very, very big in prison. You can find yourself out on the yard, like on a day to where you don't have class. Or I remember when I initially went to prison in 2001, they didn't make you have a job. They didn't make you go to school. So at that time, you could just, it was whatever. If you wanted to sit on the yard all day and play poker, that's what you could do. Now, the poker games, again, they're not legal, but it's what people do. And you're in a poker game in prison, you don't have chips. So what they do is they keep the score on paper. So people, it's probably like, what do you mean they keep, how do you keep a poker score on paper you see what i'm saying because that's how i was when they were initially telling me i'm like what it doesn't make sense i'm gonna give you a prime example how you play poker in prison on paper say you want to bet i don't know 50 cents because you got to understand we're in prison well at the time <laughs> i was in prison so you're not playing you know five dollars a hand ten dollars a hand no you're playing something small like 50 cents that's where it starts at you know, you start off 50 cent, maybe a dollar game or what have you. So let's just say, for the sake of easy math, we're going to say a dollar. I bet a dollar. If you want to raise that dollar, let's just say you want to raise it to three dollars. 
You don't say, okay, raise it to $3. You say two make three. Because it's already a dollar that's going. You see what I'm saying? So when you say two, that means bet an additional two, making it three. If you want to go to five, you say four make five. If you want to go to ten, nine make ten. That's how you gamble and, and that's how you um essentially bet in prison as far as on the poker table. So once you do that, whoever's housing the game, he has to keep up with all of that. So he's going to write it down on the paper to make three. You see what I'm saying? Now, if you want to fold, you fold. If you want to stay in, you bet. The next person, he bets. So it just continues to go around the table just like that. You may have five or six people. I don't want to say five or six people because usually the poker games are limited to about seven people in prison. You may have three people that stay in the in the hand. Everybody else folds. Now, once you get that down, it's not very hard to do. Like I've housed a many of poker games in prison. You see what I'm saying? Like because math is just easy to me. Um, it's just simple, but we're not talking about me per se. The danger in that is uh, most people can't think quickly like that. The poker guy, I mean, the house, he's already taken 10% off top. So if the final pot ends up being, you know, $17, he's taking a dollar 70. The winner, he's going to get 1530. You see what I'm saying? But everybody can't do math like that that fast. So it's called pin whipping. They're going to pin whip you. Take an extra dollar, take an extra 50 cent, take an extra 75 cent. Well, it doesn't seem as though it's a lot. But at the end of a three or four hour poker game and you've been pin whipping, not everybody and not every single time. As the house alone, you didn't probably picked up an extra 15, 20, 30 dollars just pin whipping people. So if, if, like I said, if you're not really detailed or, or not detailed, but if you're not really math, it's not really your thing and you can't think quickly like that, I highly suggest that you stay out of the poker games in prison. You know, with so much game that goes on, you might have, okay, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to put you in the game. All you got to do, I'm going to cover all your debt. The only thing I need you to keep raising. Because, see, you can only initially, like, initially you bring your items to the game. So if you want to start off with $10, okay, you got to bring your first. That's what they call it, bring your first. But after that, you can't keep running back to your locker, going to get items, food items, bringing them back to the poker table. Again, this is illegal. So they call it going up top. Going up top in prison just uh, essentially means it's a form of credit. But they'll set a limit for you unless they really, really know that, you know, you that guy or you have the money. So they may say, OK, ten dollars up top. Then you got to clear your tops so you can go up top ten dollars without going to get your items after you bring your first items to the game. So you bring your first five or ten dollars. You lose it. Hey, man, give me give me ten more up top. Give me five more up top. OK, I'm going to give you five, ten more dollars to play with. Now, if you happen to lose that. You have to go get your items. Clear that debt. Then you can continue on. Well, that, that causes a problem. Because people, they'll know that they can only go up top $10. Come on, man. You trying to play me like a broke dude. I got money. But it was already made abundantly clear in the beginning that the tops is $10. You cannot go up top more than $10. Because I may know that you have money, but if I let you do it, then this guy's going to try to do it. Then that guy's going to try to do it. So that causes a problem because he's already mad that he's losing. Then he feels as though you're trying to play me like a sucker, even though he knew what the rules were. Then you have people that they like to play on their ass. Pause. Now, playing on your ass in prison means, OK, I don't have this money in my locker to cover. So if, if I go up top ten dollars. And I lose, I don't have that to bring to the table. So either we're going to get down or. It's going to be what it's going to be. I ain't paying. I, I don't have it to pay. That causes a problem. And like I was saying uh, initially before explaining, because I have to paint a picture and, and allow you all to know exactly what I'm speaking of, because sometimes I can get caught up in my stories 
And when I'm using prison lingo, you all may not necessarily know what I mean. So you may put a person or two in the game and you say, okay, every time you keep raising the bets. So if it's, you know, four make five, which it's a dollar bet, but you say four to make it five. But by the, comes, by the time it comes to you, I'm all in. That's shoving, pushing all the way in. Pause, double pause. Or you may say five make 10. You see what I'm saying? The whole goal is the house. You want to get everybody to fold and take all of that money. Even if you have absolutely nothing. So you have other people that are raising a bet. So by the time it gets back around to the house. If the guy that you working with has already said five make ten. The house is going to say man the whole table's in. The whole table's in. Which means. Whatever you have in front of you or whatever you have on paper. I'm calling you all in. So either you can fold and lose that five that you had bet or the 10 if you called that. Or you can go all in with the house. The house got unlimited money. So it's so much game that goes on. I've seen people passing cards underneath the table. You got people that stand around the poker tables. Now, you don't really see this as much because people hide their cards and a lot of times you don't want to have a big crowd at a poker table because that draws the attention. The cool COs, they know you're playing poker, but they're going to leave you alone. As long as it's not a big problem, you know, commotion or anything going on, they know you're playing poker, but they're going to leave you alone. Because when you when you keep a score on paper, you put uh, playing for fun. You see what I'm saying? You may put make up a card game or just any any sort of card game you'll put for fun. So they can't say that you're gambling because it's and they don't see any items at the table, because when you bring your first, you don't bring it actually to the table. The collectors pick up the items and they have it in a undisclosed location. You see what I'm saying? So there's no items at the table, so they can't possibly prove that you're gambling, but they clearly know that you're gambling. So, you know, it's just a whole lot of game that goes on. You may bust the poker game up the same as I was talking about. Uh, uh, the ticket man, you may bust a poker game up for $70, $80. The guy housing the game may not want to pay you depending on who you are and depending on who he is. Like I said, there's a lot of stand-up guys in prison. Everybody's not rotten to the core like that. You see what I'm saying? But you got some guys that's just like, hey, I ain't got it or I can't pay it. You trying to house the game to come up. So if you end up having to pay out all this money, may not pay it another thing is when you do get paid guess what that's your responsibility to get these items back to your dorm now if you're not in the same dorm as the uh guy that was housing the game his collector's gonna bring you you know 50 60 dollars in prison 50 60 dollars man that's a big old bag got net bags with the holes in them that I always tell you all about. You use that for your laundry. You use that for your commissary. You use that for your whatever. So these items have to be transported to you. So you get this big, you got this big old bag where you got to get it back to the dorm. So if you catch a cool CO that's on that ain't going to say nothing, okay, cool. But if you have a jerk or somebody like that, you have to figure out a way to maneuver, manipulate to get these items. And you had cameras everywhere. So you got to figure out a way to get this back to your dorm. Then when you get it back to your dorm, you got to worry about dudes trying to, you know, rob you. Now, that doesn't happen that much. It does happen. But like I said, if you're a stand-up guy and people know you're going to stand up for yourself, that don't really happen to you as much. So it's kind of, I don't know, I may be going a little bit, uh, not necessarily overboard, because that does happen. People do rob you. I've seen people's whole lockers being taken. Take the whole locker. Locker's probably about, I don't know, three, say about three feet high. Come and take the whole locker. Dirty game in prison. It's a dirty, dirty game. And then on that poker table, man, like I said, it's so much game because you have to rely on a person keeping their word, doing what they say that they're going to do. Now, on the flip side, I've seen guys lose two or three hundred on the poker table or win two or 300 on the poker table. And let's just say, 
let's just say I lose $250 on the poker table. Well, obviously, I don't have $250 in my locker, but the guy has in the game, he trusts me. He knows me or he know I'm good for it. So he may say, well, look, bro, this is what we're going to do. We ain't going to do no store list because at the store, you can only spend like $125 a week. Now, I don't want to say like only like it's not anything because 120 if you spending 125 a week in prison man you you penitentiary rich nothing cute about that there's nothing brag you know not trying to be braggadocious about anything like that I'd rather be out on the streets making 12 13 dollars an hour opposed to being penitentiary rich but i'm just giving you all the you know the rundown on it if you will so if you owe 250 ticket man may i mean uh the, the house man may say, well, look, bro, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to cut you a deal. How your people send me a $200 money order? I'm going to knock 50 off. Or send me a, you know, $225 money order, and I'm going to knock $25 off. People get on the phone, yo, send this money order, such and such, or you tell them on visit or whatever, and boom, now things are different because they're not really operating on money orders in Kentucky, and I would assume anywhere really everything's through your jpay jpay is just a it's just a way to where you can send money basically through a uh, debit card credit card and it's instantaneously you don't have to wait two or three days for the money order to arrive and then you got to wait for the staff or whoever's over the inmate accounts to actually post the money that's how it used to be back in the day they'll have the money order sitting up there on a tuesday afternoon and she may not post it until wednesday or thursday no everything's instant now get on jpay so the people that's have people that's incarcerated you can look them up once you look them up the inmate number or whatever if they're in the state get on jpay send them some money it gets to them instantly you can send messages email back and forth on jpay everything's through jpay so the method of getting paid is so much quicker now opposed to back then but what happens if the dude owes 250 and he don't pay it Man, my people said they're going to they gonna send it, man. I don't know. You waiting. A couple days done passed. Five, six days now. You know, a week or two. Person ain't paid you that money. It's going to be a problem. It's either going to be a problem for you or it's going to be a problem for him. But it's going to be a problem. Because this person can't let that slide. Nobody, they're going to truck his poker games now. How you going to have a poker game? And, and like, people want to know that they're going to get paid. If, if I know I'm not going to get paid, I'm not coming to play in your poker game well if i know it's going to be problems friction or whatever i'm not going to stay i'm not going to play in your poker game it's just dangerous man i've seen guys i've seen guys um they'll bust the poker game up or the ticket man up and they'll have all these items 200 300 worth of stuff do to send his goons in to come in they sell and rob them run that <laughs> run that all that back same thing that happens on the streets happens in prison the same exact thing. The only difference is there's no guns in prison. They're knives. There's people that can fight. Can fight real, real, real well. Dangerous. You got guys that, uh, you know, they'll jump you. One fight, we all fight. So if you're not really running with a click like that, which they call a car, in prison, if your car ain't really like that, and this car over here, they 10 deep. You only run with three, four dudes. Y'all not really, you know, y'all just there. Kind of like I was. I wasn't no hell of, hell of fat dude in prison. I wasn't, you know, running around knocking people out. I wasn't, you know, I got in some fights. I got in plenty of fights. Fought some big dudes. Got a couple stories I can tell you. Additional stories I can tell you. Didn't win them all. Didn't lose them all. One thing, I never backed down. You see what I'm saying? You can't do that in prison. But, you know, you, you got some guys in prison, they going to try you. They're going to try you. They're going to see where your heart's at. Uh, got me one. That's what they love to say in prison. Got me one. If they feel like they can get over on you, if they feel like, oh, this guy ain't going to do nothing. He's soft. His heart pumps Kool-Aid. <laughs> His heart pumps Kool-Aid. Can't be like that, man. Best thing is just not to go to prison. But if you find yourself in that scenario, a situation, man, you got to stand up and you got to man up. You ain't got to be in there being hard you don't have to be in there uh you know trying to be the toughest guy but you do have to be a stand-up guy in prison man. in jail prison wherever in life 
but particularly in there because you know people respect one thing in prison violence violence people respect one thing violence i can tell you what i'm gonna do all day long but if i grab something and and, and you know handle my business guess what i'm looked at as a hero they got on play man you see what he did to that boy he don't play but look what it's gonna cost you potentially cost you more time you go up some I, if, if you if you split somebody's wig in prison especially with a weapon man they're gonna hit you in Kentucky they're gonna hit you with an assault charge parole board's gonna see that so now you was hoping to get home to your family and, and loved ones but now you got an extra charge on top of the time that you are already doing. So the whole thing is just avoid avoid that totally. And you avoid that, one of the ways to avoid it is staying off the poker table. And if you're going to play tickets, if you just must play tickets, play little small tickets to where if you win $5, 10 you ain't hurt. Ain't nobody tripping on 5 or $10. But like I said, when it comes to the point where you're trying to break the house and you hit him for a hundred dollars because in prison that's a lot of money you hit somebody for 70 80 dollars in prison oh man they're gonna be pissed and they may still pay it but they're not gonna be happy about it they can win every single week and have one week to where they get busted up it's gonna be a problem potentially potentially again it depends on the ticket man and it depends on or if you're talking about poker it depends on who's housing the game it just depends on that individual that you're doing business with. So to answer your question in a nutshell, that's why you shouldn't really gamble in prison. And that's why it's dangerous in prison. You know, people gamble on dominoes. That's another one. Dominoes is pretty, gets pretty lucrative. Dominoes. Spades, people don't really play spades as much, but spades is a big, a big game in prison. It definitely is. Um, those are the main things, the main games that people really genuinely gamble on in prison. Real Kens TV. Hopefully you liked the video. Feel free to comment. Definitely share. Subscribe to the ch 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 channel. Yeah, you know I mean, if you're not already subscribed, be sure to hit that post notification. So anytime I bring you this action and this heat, you're amongst the first to receive. Now I don't know what's going on. I've had several people hit me up and say, Real Kins, I didn't even know you were still dropping videos. I'm subscribed, and then I look up and I'm unsubscribed. Or I looked up and my notifications are not going off. I don't know. I'm still new with this YouTube thing as well, so I'm trying to figure it out or whatever. Um, I don't know exactly what's going on. But just know that I'm dropping videos on a regular basis. So if you haven't seen anything from me or... Or you haven't heard anything, what have you. And just click on to my channel. And uh, I guarantee you, I have some content up. New content up for you. Real Kens TV, man. Y'all send y'all people some money that's locked up, man. It's, you know, doing bad, man. See what I'm saying? Don't make them pay forever. Send them some money, man. JPay.com, man. That's all you got to do. Have they inmate number, facility where they at, or what have you. Boom. Just like magic. Real keens.